Hello everyone, I'm Mark Torello. Today we're here at the Vale Sports Club in Middletown, Connecticut. Thanks to the owner, Zach Edinger, he's gonna let us use his soccer facility um, to share with you a couple tips on how to do some line management. And then also um, I'm gonna play around with doing some casting and measuring out what the distances are, are that I can throw, say a floating line and an intermediate that I brought today. Um, so first thing, is uh, why we want to do this is we're gonna you know try to get some good measurements on on what it what I can do casting one of the fly lines let's say the floating line um, and the reason that you want to do that is that knowing what your distance and what your capabilities are when you're throwing the fly line um, that you can reach a fish so a lot of times let's say we're out with our buddies in a, in a fishing environment and a friend of yours or a guide maybe a guide says to you hey fish at 10 o'clock um, 100 feet out so knowing that your average throw is maybe 60 feet, you know that you can't throw at 100 feet, so you wait till you get a little closer or it helps you get an idea of, okay, I'm gonna look out to 60 feet, and he said 100, all right, I gotta go another 40 feet, and that's a better idea of getting an idea of where those fish are, um, so that you know that you can cast. So, and then two, if you're working on this and you know your distances, when again, when you're fishing with, a, with somebody else, or more importantly, a guide, they're trying to measure what your capabilities are too, so you know what what you what you can do and how far you can cast. You're not going to force a cast to maybe spook a fish um, or whatever may happen in the situation. One of the things that I want to share with you is taking the line off the reel. One of the tips that um, when you first take the line off the reel, the line's got a lot of memory to it. So depending on what the type of the fly line it is. So an old friend of mine, Ron Caulfield, showed me this back when he was mentoring me when I first started fishing, is before we would go launch our kayaks, he we would take our fly lines and help each other stretch out the line. Just like I'm using this soccer pole here to act as another individual to help me stretch the line. So as you can see, when I first took the line off the reel, the line has a lot of memory in it and you can see that it's still trying to coil up on the on the fly, fly reel. Um, but once I stretch it out, you can see that that memory in the line is all gone. So with this first line that I'm, uh, that I'm throwing here, this is a, uh, I'm throwing a floating line. I've got the rod overloaded. So I've got an eight foot or nine foot, eight weight rod. It's a six P temple fork rod. It's my travel rod. And then I've got it loaded with a nine weight floating line. I do have an eight weight floating line for this, for this, uh, setup. But the problem with that is that that line is more for fishing down south for bonefish, tarpon, whatever it may be. Um, I was a little concerned that that line wouldn't work in these conditions. If it was too cold inside the building, that line wouldn't throw very well. So I overloaded the rod. And then the other reason I overloaded the rod is I wanted to see how the rod performed by overloading it. Now, I would not recommend that you overload a rod if you're gonna be making delicate presentations to say fishing to fish that are in two feet of water. That, water's probably, that line's probably gonna hit the water pretty, pretty hard and you're probably gonna spook fish and you won't be happy. Um, so I wouldn't do that in that situation. But most streamer, situ, streamer applications, you can get away with over, overloading a rod because it doesn't matter what, what your presentation, how hard it hits the water, it doesn't matter. And then as you can see in this particular casting demonstration that I'm throwing, I've got that cone measured off at 60 feet and I'm throwing that thing 70, 80. And the only reason I'm not throwing it any further is because I ran out of room for back cast. Um, I probably could have got 100 feet out of that line if I wanted to. So I gotta be honest with you, that kind of surprised me. I didn't think that I could throw that line that far. I thought my average cast was about 60 feet. Um, so uh, I was pretty impressed that that worked. Um, the other thing too is you can see that I'm doing a little bit of work on um, a back cast, seeing how far I could throw with the back cast. A um, little bit of see on how accurate I was, but more I care about what my distance is that I'm throwing it even on a back cast. And I pretty much can do it pretty much the same distance. Um, again, I was struggling with not having enough back, uh, back area for the back cast. Um, it kind of threw me off. Um, you can see also in this casting demonstration that everything that I'm doing, I'm double hauling because in saltwater applications, you really, really need to double haul. I get a lot of guys that do a lot of trout fishing and they come out my boat and start, you know, try to do some saltwater fishing. And, um, you know, you could see that without them double hauling, they don't get the blind out there as far as they could or the wind kind of beats them up. Um, so good thing to work on your double haul on top of that. 
All right, and then the last thing that I wanted to share with you was getting an idea of how much line you need to take off the reel to make that accurate cast. Um, so if you know that you throw, you know, your average cast is 60 feet, um, you need to know how much line you need to have on the deck. I can't tell you how many applications or how many situations I've got myself into where I'm setting up the boat to go into a drift and I see fish coming up and I'm trying to rip off line in time to make it and I either rip off not enough line and I can't reach the fish or two, I take off so much line that the rest of it's getting all coiled up in the bottom of the boat or I get a knot through the line and again, I missed an opportunity to get to the fish. So it's a really good idea to measure off, know exactly what you, what you need for line. So that's what the other thing that I, was, that I was measuring out here is I was taking and I figured out that it takes me 12 strips of the line to get to my 60 feet. So that puts me right at my distance. I don't have too much on the deck or I could take an extra, make sure I do, but, um, or I'm not gonna be short of the fish. Cause generally when I look at, you know, cause I'm on the water enough, if you know what your 60 feet is or what your capabilities are, you're gonna be able to look at that situation and know, all right, I can reach those fish. Thanks for watching, bye.